Ladies and gentlemen, introducing now the principals. First, in the red corner to my left, wearing the red trunks, black trim, weighing 173 pounds. He is undefeated in 33 professional bouts, 29 wins by way of knockout. He hails from Pensacola, Florida, and is ranked by the Bible of Boxing Ring Magazine as the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, the IBF Super Middleweight Champion of the World, Roy Jones! blue trunks, white trim, weighing 175 pounds, his professional record, 49 victories, 3 defeats, 1 draw, he has 36 wins by way of knockout, he hails from Kingston, Jamaica, but now makes his home in Las Vegas, Nevada, former WBA junior middleweight champion of the world. Go, Roy. Come on out, Roy. Come on, Mike. Come on in, gentlemen. All right, gentlemen, I'll be the third man in the ring with you this evening in charge of this WBC World Championship bout at all times. I want you to obey my command to break. If you score a knockdown, go to the neutral corner. Do not come out till I signal. Protect yourself at all times. Don't use your head as a weapon. No rabbit punches or low blows. Shake hands. Come out boxing at the belt. Jim, a boxing man once said about mismatches, the whole world is a mismatch. Roy Jones has certainly made most of his fights mismatches. Can he do it to a crafty veteran like McCallum? And we told you about the microphone, which has been sewn into George's trunks, or I mean, uh, into Roy's trunks. You've had one in your trunks for a long time, right, George? So uh, at some point in this first round, we'll open up the Roy Jones microphone that's in his trunks and see what we hear. The Roy Jones strategy should be go out there and do what you can do and do it quick. Move up a few more pounds and you can be heavyweight champ of the world. Don't take a long time doing it to make people doubt. You mean light heavyweight champion of the world? No, he can move up a few pounds. Every guy want to be heavyweight champ of the world. I have to go up about 30 or 40 pounds. That's what he's trying to do. Now, McCollum should jab this guy to the body, stay to the body, and make him pay for those extra pounds that he's put on. Yeah, Every coming up from 168 to 175, so McCollum will want to make him feel it early. Yes, yeah, jab him to the body. Every chance you get, touch his body. Roy Jones expected by those around him to be cautious in the first few rounds because of his great respect for McCallum's savvy and his ring skills and his counterpunching ability. On the other hand, they say, if McCallum makes a mistake, Roy will show no mercy. Roy Jones, when his back touches those ropes, he start doing anything he can, so you got to be careful. Do what you're going to do it to him in the middle of the ring. Don't go following him on those ropes. <laughs> Jones keeping his eyes trained to the middle of McCallum's chest and throwing a left to the lower body. Near the belt line, he landed a right hand over the top about 20 seconds ago. And let's take a listen to the Roy Jones mic. It's in his trunks. Gives you graphic audio on the body shots. Now you can hear that punch to the body. McCollum 
And then a good left jab. And remember, it doesn't look like much in the first couple of rounds, but if he can continue to do this, it'll pay off. He can slow Roy's pace and get him into a more deliberate engagement if he keeps landing to the body. That's what he's been doing to opponents throughout his long career. Colin has to be careful, though. When you jab down, you got to bring that left hand back up quick. This is the most conventional three minutes of work we've seen out of Roy Jones in a long time. Mostly working off the jab in a very orthodox fashion, throwing straight left jabs and right hands. We haven't seen any of those triple and quadruple left hooks, which have defined his work against lesser opponents. Roy Jones loses very few rounds. That was one of them. Right hand to the body. Look at it. Protect this eye, though. When you shoot the jab, you're doing this, Roy. You can get your hook hand off of When you shoot the hook, you Okay, keep your right hand high. Keep your right hand high, but I'm telling you, even when you try to jab to the body, he'll reach down and try to get it. Okay? With his right. Okay, he'll try to reach down and get it. You can get your hook hand off of Just keep working your jab and keep touching that body. That's good. Just keep that strategy going. Once on a wall, each knee. Jab, jab, once on one, each knee. Breathe deep. Breathe deep. To the right. Mampis. Stay there. I don't know if Roy was paying homage to a great old pro in that first round, but it's time for him to make this a fight in the present and not from the past. Maybe he's not all that comfortable working in such a conventional fashion. By punch stat numbers, George Foreman, he threw 15 jabs in the first round and only landed one of them. He's short with the jab so far. And McCallum is stepping in and committing more to the jab when he throws it. That's right, but at the same time, Roy Jones Cone has picked up on McCullen leaving that left hand down when he jabs. And this boy can make you pay. Roy Jones can make you pay for dropping your hand. As he just did there with a counter right over the top of McCallum's jab. And now Roy begins to step in just a little bit more aggressively as the battery pack for his microphone creeps up out of the back of his shorts. Good right hand to the body by Roy Jones. Now he starts to lead with the left hook as he's done more frequently in the past couple of years. And McCallum going to the body. Got in two good shots. Straight right landed for Jones. But Jones kind of reaching with these shots, not really stepping in behind them. That left hand of McCullen is long as all outdoors, and he just lays it there in the stomach. And if he keeps it up and don't be lazy with it, he can do a lot of damage in the next couple of rounds. Certainly McCallum is following his fight plan. Roy Jones lands a right cross. McCallum takes it pretty well. McCullen is throwing that left jab to the chest of Roy Jones. We've got the Jones mic open. That's why you're hearing these body shots so graphically. Landed a little left hook in there. Right hand missed, but the left landed flush on McCallum's chin. McCallum goes back to the body to good effect. first comment is I don't think that the sound that comes from that battery pack is any great advancement for humankind. Let's get, let's get back there, man. And they ought to cut it off, and I think they are. You got him hanging out there with his punches now. 
Give him some of them long, he's too slow. Give him some of them long shots that he wants. Them long right hands to the body. Let him, let him bring his head to you. Give him some three and four point combinations now. He's too slow for you, Ron. I want to call the truth, but you ain't. You ain't. I'm talking about when you go into your body with long stuff. Take the head. Take the head. Try to hit him with two and three. When he's straightened up, then go to the body. Come back out. Okay? Give him some water. That's cool, son. Yeah. He, he respect you already. He ain't going to keep stalking like that. Just keep touching his body. We got it. We got it. Okay, you got it. Let's do it, Dr. All right. Let's the game, Mike. Number three, Roy. Thank you. Mike, number three. Goodbye, battery pack. <laughs> Goodbye, trunk Mike. Oh, no, it's still there, Larry. Is it? Still got the battery pack, yep. Stuffed it down a little farther into the trunks. So we'll still hear some more. George, you think Jones is more effective when he dispenses with the jab and just leads with left hooks? Well, he's effective now mentally because like the old story of Samson waking up with his hair off. He's landing some good shots with no effect because this guy's heavier than he is only. Trading punches in the corner. McCallum giving just as good as he takes. 27-year-old Roy Jones getting a little bit of a lesson early from 39-year-old Mike McCallum. And what happens after those exchanges is McCallum leans on this guy. And let me tell you, those... About fight time, he weighs about 200 pounds. A lot of water and a lot of steak juice there. Callum working almost exclusively to the body most of the time. When he gets in close, he might take a poke at Jones's head, but most of the time, he is working from the chest down, like there. Jones using his piston-like combinations inside, and McCallum coming right back. Now, this probably could be some of the mistakes that McCollum is doing now. You save your energy and don't waste any punches because you got a long night ahead of you. McCallum willing to be the aggressor. Jones drawing him in. McCallum taking advantage of the chance to fire body shots. McCallum should be very conservative. Win every round. Don't look for a knockout. Oh, that was the right hand to the body by McCallum. I got him here. Come on up. Good left hook inside by Jones. Uppercut, then left hook. <laughs> and McCallum pounding the ribcage in both. Most importantly, remember, after he delivered those shots, he leans all of that body weight on Jones. Sounds like something you've done yourself. And had it done to me. <laughs> Pattern of the fight so far. Roy Jones lands upstairs. Mike McCallum lands downstairs. Winning, what the is? job is the winning pound, Junior. You're not jabbing, you, you're too static in front of him. Right. You're too static in front of him. Like, if you went over there, yeah. you went just a little, I know, ping, ping, right to it, anywhere, okay? Right, man. Give too much respect. I got it, I got it, I got it. Smart work, man. Let's be able to hook. Come back down to the body. Run across. Spin on out. Right. When he turns, he's sitting there waiting on him. Right. Oh, oh, you're on hook one. Okay. Okay. You're going to be out of the way of it. You're going to roll out of it. All right. Now, the microphone is gone. Nope. They're going to put it back on it. I think. I couldn't tell whether Coach Berkerson got it back in there or not. You know, all of the whirling dervish of Roy Jones 
all of the rat-a-tat-tat, that sensational stuff, completely neutralized by a great old pro, regardless of what happens in this fight. Well, let history state that trunk Mike lasted three rounds. Hard right hand over the top by Jones. Jones looking for more and more creative solutions against Mike McCallum. Yeah, Roy Jones has got to step up the beat a little bit to take away some of the confidence and make McCollum an opponent. You, got, you just can't let him think he's in here to win. Make him think like an opponent by hitting him with a lot of hit shots. And I thought I heard McCallum's cornerman suggesting to him that he was showing Jones too much respect. Both fighters have good reason to show respect. Something here, and he makes the same feint twice and gets you to miss the same punch twice. He's thinking of what comes next. Yeah, but, but. There it was, straight right hand counter. And another. This reminds me, or could remind all of us, of the night when people thought Sugar Ray Robinson was going to pull a rabbit out of a hat when he went up against a fine light heavyweight champion. Joey Maxim. Willie Maxim. Joey. Round after Joey Maxim. Round after round, people kept thinking, Ray is going to do something. Nothing ever happened. So the big contrast you see here is veteran light heavyweight against a guy moving up to his weight class, huh? So, you got to know what you're doing when you face a big man. you got to win. Stop trying to knock him out. Make him think, too. Of course, McCallum spent much of his career at 154, eventually moved to 160. Later fought at 168. 175 is, is a function for him of getting older and a little bit more settled in his body type. we can say for sure is that McCallum is posing some questions and some answers to Roy Jones that he hasn't been able to deal with here. I mean, this is amazing. I think that McCallum is winning the fight. Good. you won the round. You see? Why are you All right, Harold, out? give us I'm your score. Nothing. Larry, you I don't think McCallum's winning the fight. Weren't, weren't. I got Roy Jones, 3-1, to 39-37. I think Roy Jones for the first three rounds, which was landed a shot at crisp punches. In the first round, McCallum landed ball, but there was absolutely nothing behind it. And I mean nothing. He just touched him, and that was all. When Roy hit him in the first three rounds, he whacked him. But the, in the fourth round, Roy Jones didn't do a darn thing, but lay back on a rope, so McCallum certainly out jammed him. I have the score by rounds. Two rounds for McCallum, one round for Jones, and one even. That's about the way I see it, too. Yeah. Well, Roy looks ineffectual to me up to now. I can tell you, fellas, uh, because I'm getting to see the scores of the WBC judges, and all three WBC judges agree with Harold. They all have Roy Jones winning the fight to this point. We may have a great controversy by the end of this night. <laughs> I thought we already did. <laughs> Only if it goes to a decision. Can you imagine a controversial ending in boxing? I try. <laughs> McCallum's going to the body again. After every combination. Whoa, a good right hand by Jones. And a left hand, and McCallum has suddenly stopped in his tracks as Jones brings his punching power and speed to bear. And McCallum delivers just a little low, and Roy does a dance for uh, McCallum's benefit. I think they like each other, incidentally. Is it hard to fight a guy that you really like, George? Well, yeah, not really. It's all a game anyway. Now, McCallum is turning into an opponent. Whenever Roy Jones land those power punches, he makes McCallum think he is an opponent. You got to keep it up. Go into the 
the body, giving McCallum a little of his own medicine. And I think that's the best way for Roy to change this up, George, that's is right. to go downstairs. And he can win these rounds. You're not going to get a knockout that easy. You're going to have to earn it. He might have to satisfy himself with the decision tonight. It sure would be a good idea to take some starts out of McCallum. Of course, low blows will do it for you if you're allowed to get away with it. I thought that was a good left hook. Mike McCallum, 16 years as a pro, has never been stopped. Good right hand by McCallum. It was a tip, but it was good. taking advantage of a clean opening to go to the body with the right hand. Roy Jones sneaks in a right. Callum able to handle Jones's punching power so far. Because of the extra weight, Jones has got to concentrate on the body a little bit to make those punches count. That time, McCallum's right hand over the top, partially blocked. Jones taking advantage of the opportunities to counter, but not going to the body. And there he did with the right hand and got in a perfect left hook as a result. Great combination by Jones there. His combinations are starting to pick up a bit. He's starting to get his range as the rounds go by. When he mixes in the body punches, he gets opportunities upstairs. That right hand, come, left right combination, that hurt McCollum. Yep. Best punch of the fight. Best round of the fight for Jones. When he start getting away from your right hand, come. When he get away from your right hand, come back with his ab after the game. Two one two, a one two one. Okay. Get back to him. You get to him now. You don't start touching. Hey, that's how you got here. Let's have fun out here. You in the sixth round, okay? You in the sixth round. Put some Vaseline on his back too. That's all. That's good. That's what I'm talking about. Come on, let's have fun. Hit and don't get hit, okay? Yes, sir. Hit and don't get hit. Give it. Let's land two and three and go. Mm -hmm. Two and three. You got to keep working that jab. You got to keep working that jab. And don't get curly. You cover very nice. His left hook with the right hand. Next time, go under and come out with the right hand. There we go. Hit it. Hit it. Let's go. That's okay, Mikey. Go. Number six. Michael, number six. establishing a superior reach and keeping those combinations from Jones at a minimum. He's allowed this guy to wake up, man. It's hard to put a sleeping giant back to sleep. It's hard to sustain dominance for 12 consecutive rounds against a guy who clearly has more athletic gifts at this moment in his career. Now, Roy Jones is doing a lot of movement, and he's thinking combination when he stands flat-footed to the body with the right hand. Jones with a quick little left hook in there. Once again in this round, Roy has not been going downstairs and consequently hasn't gotten much chance to fire combinations. Backs McCallum up with a straight right to the chest. Now he has McCallum thinking about throwing that right hand. Once you start thinking, you're in trouble. You gotta just do it. Jones just a tiny bit short with that right cross. And he's finding the range with power punches. He landed 25 out of 36 of them in the last round. When you're fighting a boxer like Roy Jones Jr., the most devastating thing you can do to him is out-jab him, especially jab to the head. But that's what you do. You take that jab away from him by out-jabbing but, but, but the thing about Roy George is that he really doesn't throw the jab that often. He's a, he has his own unorthodox style. He throws more power punches than jabs, and that's precisely why I think McCallum is exposing him a bit here. He, he doesn't have to worry too much about the jab. 
Jones started out throwing jabs and fighting from an orthodox stance with an orthodox style in the first two rounds, and since then has reverted to form, leading as often as not with the left hook or a straight right over the top. Fans of feet, boxes, and hand, they just hate to be hit with left jab. Mm -hmm. And McCallum is sticking it. Yeah, you hit them in the body, they don't mind. You hit them with a good right hand every now and then, but don't jab me. That's what's happening to uh, Roy Jones tonight. Jones punctuates the round with a left hook and a right cross. Maybe enough to persuade the judges to think of him one more time as they mark their scores. Let it work. Take deep breath. I got you. I got you. Yes. All right. Mix your power up a little bit. Yes, sir. Mix your power up. Okay. Touching light, touching stone, light stone. Just keep mixing it up. Okay. Keep mixing up. When you go with them three-point combinations, don't go to the head all the time. Come down. Change up. Then back up. Yes. Okay. Change them combinations up. Bridget. Bridget. Come on. Beautiful. Bridget, Michael. Bridget. You're shocking the world, baby. Keep it up. Bridget. Come on. All right. Let's go. Big one. You're more aggressive, Michael. Get the judge's excuse for you to win the fight. Give it to the other. Put the after burners in, baby. Number seven, halfway home now. Roy, number seven. Right about now, I'm starting to think of, well, what would Roy Jones look like against Leonard and Hagler and Hearns? If, if he's having this much trouble looking good against a nearly 40-year-old McCallum. I think that's a legitimate question that may be asked after this fight is over. Well, particularly since McCallum said yesterday, widely quoted around the world, Roy Jones is better than all those guys. He's twice as good as they were. Well, it doesn't cost him anything to say that. <laughs> particularly not the way he's holding his own tonight. Jones finding his own punch output limited as McCallum goes to the body. Jones stuns McCallum momentarily with a left hook. Roy smiling in there now as he gets ready to go back to work. Power punch combination starting to land more frequently again for Roy Jones. Walked cautiously through the first few rounds and now lands a right hand straight off the top. Punch. Roy Jones is, is moving exclusively to McCallum's left now. And McCallum cannot position his feet enough to protect himself. Roy Jones caught on to it and he's going to exploit this guy. He can neutralize McCallum's jab by moving to his right. Yeah, McCallum just doesn't seem to have a proper movement. Only when Jones moves to his right can he even jab effectively. Decoy McCallum now, and attempting to get the crowd a little bit more involved. He does some of his own cheerleading in the ring. Oh, that's quick. And it was a pot shot. Solid left hook in there. McCallum's taking these punches pretty well, but Roy Jones is having a spectacular round seven. What happened was McCallum was able to counter on top of that right hand with his own scratch to the side of the head of Jones. That temporarily made him inactive, so he should exploit it. Callum going back to the body as he corners Jones. Boy coming out with one of those whirlwind combos. Callum would do better if he not even think of a knockout. Just go out there and try to win the fight. Whenever he even thinks power, Roy Jones hits him three or four times. Round seven, a long and rough passage for Mike McCallum. Jones starting to assert himself. We told you about the WBC judges seated in odd places for them as they try to score the fight. There's Barbara Perez. She is seated in the first press row. 
And as you can see, it's a pretty good distance from what would normally be a ringside perch for a judge. Three judges from Florida scoring the bout. Here's another WBC judge, Marty Dinkin. And he too is at some distance from the ring as he tries to eyeball the action and score it. Let's see, Jones is in the corner trying to get McCallum to open up. He does, shoots that left hand. Obviously the younger, quicker, stronger athlete. But if there was a handicap for age, Mike McCallum would be at least even in this fight. And we'll check in with Harold Letterman in a little while, but in the meantime, I can tell you that through seven rounds, the three WBC judges all have Jones leading by reasonably comfortable margins, and as you can see, Harold Letterman is right there in the same ballpark with them. Either of you two guys still think that uh, McCallum's winning the fight? No, 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 I don't think so. I think Jones has asserted himself in the, in the uh, last three rounds. You agree, George? Yeah, McCallum, he let the fight slip away. He had a chance to establish that the reach and everything. Now he's all, he's going to have to get himself a knockout. Because Jones found an adjustment that works for him. He's moving, and whenever he wants, he moves to McCallum's left, and he just doesn't know what to do. Yeah. Roy Jones, when he moves to his right, McCallum's left, in this direction, is able to keep McCallum from landing the jab and sets up combinations for himself. And left hook leads, and right cross leads, and footwork of the kind that you're seeing here. I think future opponents of Jones are going to be looking at this tape to see how to try to neutralize him, how to keep him from being the whirlwind that we have been celebrating. I got you, gentlemen. That's it. Easy out. McCallum doesn't have any power if he throws when uh, Jones is on his left side. He has no power at all, but Jones seemed to pick up rhythm. Which is the soft power. Only momentarily. He's done it a lot in some of his previous bouts. Hadn't done it any substantial length of time here. But Jones has found himself an ice cream parlor when he moves to the left of McCallum. Sure has. Nothing but sweet stuff happens over there. why he likes to go into the corner and position himself there, although he does have a history of coming out of the corner with lightning combinations. But this gives McCallum a chance to be effective. I mean, he's stationary here, George. Yeah, McCallum is having difficulty. Whenever he thinks of power, he just can't do it that way. you got to think combinations, and there's no defense for combinations. There's only some defense when you think about throwing five, one hard punch. relatively stationary Jones. Crowd seems disappointed that Roy allows this kind of stuff to go on. Give credit to the fighter that McCallum is as he takes a hard left and right hand from Jones. of the way to this fight. How do you score it? Larry, I got it 79-73, seven rounds to one Roy Jones. I tell you something, he's making this tough by laying on the ropes. I think there he you could, go. I, can, I think he could do a lot better if he took him into the middle of the ring. I mean, Roy Jones, when he slaps him with, with a left hook, and then he steps to the side, and he, and he throws that straight right hand, or he leads with the straight right, steps to the left, and then throws the double left hook. He's killing McCallum. So I don't know why he's laying on the ropes, but be as it may, he certainly is landing enough power shots to be winning mostly every round. I thought laying on the ropes cost him that round, but I'm probably in a minority of one. Here you see it. How we doing, guys? All right. Jones so trying to fight out of the corner, but not being very okay, effective against a veteran of this of this caliber. Come on, Mike. I think you lay on the ropes for 45 seconds and let the other guy punch you, and you don't punch him back. I don't know how that does you any good in the scoring. Round nine. A restive crowd in Tampa. 
looking for the Florida favorite son to produce some of his customary fireworks, and he has at moments during the fight. They have not had the same effect on Mike McCallum that they do on most of Roy Jones' opponents. McCallum, whenever he decides to put a four-punch combination together, he will see some good results. But waiting to hit Roy Jones with one shot, it's not going to help him. McCallum able to get to the body with the right hand, pause with the left. Jones once again goes back into the corner. Jones excites the crowd with a few power shots and then moves back into a cautious, defensive pose. Showing a lot of respect to 39-year-old Mike McCallum. Now Jones remembers to go to the body inside. Something he was neglecting to do early in the fight. Now McCallum, if he want to prove that he can do something, he's going to have to throw combinations now. At the age 39, he's got to think, hey, I better pull this thing out. There's no second chance for me. Sure, this guy is hitting me, but I used to spar with my trainer, Charlie Shack. He'd do the same stuff to me. I missed him with one shot. He'd hit me with five. But you got to use combinations back. Your hands are free to work. Callum is doing good, but he's only landed one punch at a time. A tactical boxing match. You know, he's here now. Your hands are free. Let's work. Certainly the kind of fight that Mike McCallum might have wanted to get Roy Jones into. Is he doing enough? George Foreman says not quite. Oh, he's allowing this guy to get nothing but combination after combination off. When you're in there with those young opponents, you got to be the one throwing the combination. Jones fainting, throwing a right hand lead. Temporarily stunning McCallum. McCallum shows his chin, comes back with some other good stuff inside. Jones pauses to clear his mouth. And we're three quarters away through with a scheduled 12 rounds. Way to get that quick stuff off. That's good. I got you. I got you. Yes, you. There you go. Okay. There you go. Only got a three rounds, an amateur fight. You way over the amateur fight. You way over. These three rounds you have to, go to, ten, have to give everything, Michael. This is all. Yeah. This is it. Keep your cheat down, hands up, and jab, 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 right hand to the body. You see those two right hands, but don't reach. Just try and stay. Beautiful work, Mike. Let's see Jones from the corner landed a good right hand inside there. And again. All right, number 10, coming up, baby. Number 10. Number 10, Michael. One of the things that's clear from this fight is that Jones isn't that comfortable when they're in the center of the ring. He's having a hard time working McCallum from the center of the ring, creating openings, stepping in, because Roy is so quick, he looks to punch and jump out before he can follow up. Yeah, the fight seems to always end up with Jones close to the rope. <coughs> Very interesting, guys. Uh, two of the three WBC judges who seemed early on to be giving the close rounds to Jones gave the ninth round to McCallum. A round in which Jones was dominant in punch stat numbers. Landed twice as many punches as McCallum, and yet in that round, two of the WBC judges say, well, let's give it to the guy in the light blue trucks. But to be perfectly honest, if Roy, Roy is winning the fight, let's... From the appearance of the fight, it's not like he's winning the fight 11 to 1. He's not pitching a shutout. Some of these rounds that he's getting are close rounds because he's laying on the ropes and, and McCallum is doing very well.
against him in the middle of the ring. McCallum is, he, if he's going to win this thing, he's going to have to gamble a little bit. You just can't stand out there for the chance of your lifetime. You're going to have to get up, take a chance on getting punched, but get in there and land that right hand. Incidentally, in case you're wondering, we're seeing the WBC judges scores round by round. We are not seeing the Florida judges scores round by round. Those we won't know until the end of the fight if it goes the distance. Oh, really? <laughs> well, usually Roy is the judge, the jury. Uh, the executioner. The executioner, the attorneys, everything. McCallum seems to have no power when he throws the overhand right can't do anything with it. Well, George McCallum was never a big puncher. Even in his heyday, he was a hurting puncher. He beat you down, but he was never a paralyzing puncher. I think his punches have more snap when he goes to the body. He's just a no lot more about comfortable it. throwing body punches. He throws that thing over, and it's like he doesn't even have a right hand. Only when he goes underneath. And Roy Jones is not bending over much to make that effective for him. Hey, heavy fellas, come on. Let's make now. Let's work. Let's work. Referee Brian Gary has been largely unobtrusive here. That's a good job. That right hand almost stopped the McCollum in his track. Yeah, to get the uh, impression that Roy would have to accumulate a lot of punishment to get McCallum out of there. McCallum seems just, whoa! Just as I said that, Roy says, wait a minute. Three, four, five, six. The bell has rung the bell and the referee doesn't, doesn't even doesn't know, know it. it. Yeah. Yeah. He's got the count. Here. Okay, Here now he go. knows. So the first knockdown of the bout comes right at the end of the 10th round. Quick right hand over the top by Jones. Here's the punch at the end of the round. McCallum looked like he was already heading back to the corner anticipating the bell, but it was a clean punch that sat him down on his pants. I don't think it hurt him very much. The old warrior hanging in there. Get two away, get the water. Just close it out. Well, that was one of those close rounds that could have gone McCallum's way, but the knockdown seals it for Jones. Exactly. And all three WBC judges scored it a 10-8 round. So now, unquestionably, at least for the WBC's interim light heavyweight title purposes, McCallum would need a knockout to win. Time, I got time, time. And there you see Harold Letterman saw it. Let's get it. Hold it where up. the same situation obtains, and now referee Brian Gary it's wants the wet. moisture wiped up out it's of McCallum's corner. All right, all right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Rest benefit any fighter more than the other at this point, let's George. Go. Yeah, no doubt about it. McCallum got a chance to clear his head just a little bit more, if not, if only just to last this round. Still safety first, blocking McCallum's punches with his gloves as he backs up and tries to set himself to fire combination. McCallum still going to the body. McCallum needs a knockout now. You can forget about that body and go, go for everything now. Boy, 39 just isn't what he used to be, huh? <laughs> no, young is 47. 47 is young. 39 is a little bit troublesome, but then you get you get that second win, don't you, George? Jones landed a good right hand shot. You get the feeling Jones will continue to look for the opportunity to land power shots, but he just isn't going to risk much. Surely he feels that he's in control of the fight on the scorecards, and clearly he's going to be satisfied to pound out a decision. Which I think would be a, 
a, a moral victory for McCallum at this stage of his career. And an encouragement to the half dozen or so fighters who might be looking at a Roy Jones fight down the road. Now something has to happen. 39 may become a lively number for the lightweight fighters too, huh? You were great at 39, George. You were tremendous at 39. Do you remember it? Mm. <laughs> it was yesterday, you know. <laughs> I'm only 39 now. Great right hand again bothers McCallum. Piston like left from Jones. McCallum throws him into the ropes. I'm not impressed with your hand speed, young man. He's telling them, don't go flow showing on me now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold the ropes, Mike. Don't hold the ropes and punch him now. Come on. Time. One round to go. Keep it just like that, baby. Keep it just like that. Way to work. Way to work. Cool him down. Keep it just like that. What am I here, Shumaker? Just the back of my head, huh? Just the back of my head. Very close, right now. Yeah, the knockdown got you up. We need some tape over here, guys. Like that, okay? Keep it just like that. Hey, HBO. Just like that. Keep working. Y'all watch. I'm a bad man. All right. Probably can fight all day. There you go. Last one, one, baby. Last one. We one way away. One round away, baby. Two for real champion. Okay. All right, fellas. The final round. There you see the leaping right and a staccato barrage of little little left hands. I don't think any of them did any damage. Like almost like playing the piano on McCallum's ribs. They do score. <laughs> And speaking of scoring, I get it. Harold, 11 rounds. Give it, give it to us, Harold. Larry, Shoot Larry, it to us. Larry, I hate to disappoint you. I got a 109.99, 10 rounds to one, Roy Jones Jr. The only thing I can say is I'm buying this guy a map of New York State so he can find Canastota, where the Boxing Hall of Fame is, unless he hitches a ride with George Gorman. The crowd right now apparently is more entertained by a fight going on out there in the bleachers someplace. They're not watching as Mike McCallum launches what may be his last assault to the body. And Jones comes back with counter punches to the head. Pattern of the fight throughout. Valiant effort by 39-year-old Mike McCallum. Solid, defensive, and controlled boxing display by 27-year-old Roy Jones. Jones, we would guess, well ahead on the scorecards of the Florida judges, and we know well ahead on the scorecards of the WBC judges. I tell you, if Mike McCullen had a good overhand right, this could have been a different fight tonight. Just has no power on top. Everything is under. Yeah, because the opening was there for the overhand right. He created a good opening by going to the body. He just did not have the finishing power. Jones continually landing that right-hand lead now. A little of the old Ray Leonard bolo wind up there. Some of the crowd now turning its attention back to the ring action. Although apparently that fight in the bleachers is still going on. You can see the number of spectators who have their heads turned away from the ring. Roy Jones, Jones is actually looking at the clock. Trying to wait this fight out, wait for the last 10 seconds and throw a dynamic flurry. I, I think he wants to let McCallum finish the fight. I agree. But I'm not sure he could have done anything about it if he wanted to finish the fight early. And when the final bell sounds, you will see one of those mutual embraces drenched in mutual respect. 
I don't think he wanted to let him finish it at all. You think he wanted to he knock him out? He just had not enough power in the last round. Got him. You see, he has. Why don't you finish? You see, Ryan he wasn't Garrett. waiting. Yep. And there's the mutual embrace. Referee did a good job of stepping in there to protect McCallum as the bell sounded. <laughs> no, no, Does this diminish your opinion of Roy Jones at all? With the distance. Roy Jones is probably the greatest middleweight around, but it's going to happen for him in the middleweight. He a light heavyweight. He better stay away from that if he want to maintain his greatness. Well, and if you can't be great at 175 in your assessment, then you can forget that heavyweight fantasy that everybody's talked about, right? Well, you got to grow. It may take a lot of years to grow into that. It hasn't happened this year. He's 27. You think he's still growing? Yep, he grow. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Body gets more settled. You just think about thin you used to be, George. <laughs> I used to be thin. <laughs> When you were 11. <laughs> you know, Roy can do just about anything, but, but I'm not sure that ring announcer is within his reach. Uh-oh. And new. He put the and new in the wrong place. That's what I'm thinking there. You know, he had the sequence a little out of, out of sync. Well, we've been keeping you up to date in a general sense with the WBC judges scoring of the bout. And once again, there are six judges scoring, three from the WBC and three from Florida because of a head-to-head -head dispute between the two jurisdictional bodies here. So Denkin scores it for Jones, 116-111. Kazmarek scores it for Jones, 119-108. That means 11 rounds for Jones and, and one even. Well, with the 10-8 round, maybe one round for McCallum and 11 rounds for Jones. And then uh, Barbara Perez with a 117-110 scorecard. And nobody is expecting, quite frankly, that the Florida judges will do something dramatically damaging to the Florida fighter's career, although, of course, they'll have scored the fight according to their own integrity. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge Paul Herman, Judge Jay Cassis, and Judge Rick Bays all score the bout 120-107 for the new WBC light heavyweight champion of the world, Roy Jones Jr. Jones Jr. That's a whitewash. That means that all three Florida judges scored all 12 rounds for Jones with a 10-8 round accompanying the knockdown in round 10. Final punch stat numbers, and you can see that Roy landed 45 more punches. Greatest of all time. Oh, 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 